Welcome to the program this evening. I want to share with you something that is very serious. and absolutely alarming. This evening we'd like to take a few moments to do our part in exposing the eugenics New World Order plan of depopulation of the masses. Now, you may not understand or you may not even believe what is going on even right now in the United States of America. There is a plan underway. And sad to say, this plan is coming through programs such as Planned Parenthood. going to read some information to you that is quite alarming. I hope that you will pay special attention to this message this evening. This message is probably one of the most grave messages we've ever given. Due to the content and the nature of this information, this is a matter of life and death. You may not understand what aspartame is, but tonight after this after this information is given to you, you will have a clear understanding and no longer will it be questionable whether this is dangerous, deadly, or not. Aspartame eugenics agenda exposed. <clears throat> Going to be reading some information to you. Too many people turn to artificial sweeteners to try to lose weight. Blinded by the false advertising campaign targeted at them. They do so willingly, yet they fail to question just what it is they are actually consuming. Please take a moment to digest this information. And can you blame them? Why would someone poison us? Humanity, I believe, is good at heart. We are designed to respond to immediate attacks, to think on our feet during times of urgency and turmoil. So naturally, we do not accept, expect to find a slow, incremental poison in something we've been trained to trust, which debilitates and sterilizes us over a matter of decades. Now you may want to go back and listen to this program again so that you can get all this information. This is what makes this agenda so diabolical. It is scientific. The most common artificial sweetener on the market is aspartame. It was discovered by accident in 1965 through the experiments for G.D. Cyril and was then brought, listen to this, and then was bought by Monsanto in 1984 as a separate Monsanto subsidiary. Now listen, I want you to understand, Monsanto has to do with 
the chemicals that are used to kill the weeds among many other products they sell. But they're in the business of killing. They're not in the business of life. And they bought aspartame. An investigation in 1999 revealed Monsanto were using the ex... Now listen to this. The excrement. That's the waste of genetically modified E. coli bacteria to produce aspartame. Now because of how serious this is, I'm going to read that again. You need to get this information, folks. An investigation in 1999 revealed Monsanto were using the excrement of genetically modified E. coli bacteria to produce aspartame. Are you one of those that drinks diet sodas? Or maybe you are suffering with sugar diabetes and you think it's okay to eat these foods and these things that are offered that have uh, NutraSweet or some kind of substitute for sugar. You, After this information, you will no longer partake of this poison. If you do, then you know you're going to knowingly be doing it. Because I don't believe it's my job just to raise awareness to the truth of God's word. But I do believe it's my job to lift up my voice like a trumpet. And I will tell you this. You need to get this program into the hands of anyone you know. And everyone you know. You that follow this broadcast. You that download this information. You need to be passing this on. Uh, Like it on our uh, Spreaker page and also um, share it on your Facebook pages. Until 1981, the FDA continuously refused to approve aspartame due to the seizures and brain tumors the drug was producing in lab animals. It was not until President Reagan took office, a friend of G.D. Ciro, and fired the FDA commissioner who would not approve it, that they could begin to make preparations. Did you hear that? It was not until President Reagan took office. He's a friend of G.D. Ciro. Now, you that think President Reagan was such a great president, You better think again. Hull Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S, was appointed the new commissioner. And in spite of his his own board of inquiries, inquiries, opposition, he overruled them, allowing aspartame to be used. Hull Hayes was appointed the new commissioner under Reagan, and in spite of his own board of inquiry, opposition, he overruled them, allowing aspartame to be used. Aspartame accounts for over 75% of the adverse reactions to food additives reported to the FDA's Adverse Reaction Monitoring System, later renamed Adverse Event Reporting System. 75, over 75% of adverse reactions. Many of these reactions are very serious. Common adverse reactions attributed to short-term aspartame 
use include headaches, dizziness, attention difficulties, memory loss, slurred speech, and vision problems. Again, many of these reactions are very serious. Common adverse reactions attributed to short-term aspartame use include headaches, dizziness, attention difficulties, memory loss, slurred speech, and vision problems. I don't even allow my children to chew the gum that has this poison in it. My wife still is partaking of this, these soft drinks, these diet drinks. I cannot get her off of it. But there's times when she has her gum out and she'll have it on the counter and the children will want a piece and she'll let them have it and I'll tell them, no, they cannot have it. Because I believe it is poison. I believe it is part of the eugenics agenda of, of depopulating uh, the, the masses on this earth at a very slow rate, but at the same time, it is in a lot of ways padding the pockets of the uh, medical world or the medical field, and also it's it's uh, you know the ins- everything is involved: the medical, the insurance, the banks. Everyone is profiting from this. Think about it: Pepsi pro- uh, products, Coke products. They benefit by the people buying the soda. Then the people get sick. Then the hospital benefits. And then the insurance companies benefit because the insurance companies are the ones paying the bills for those that can't afford to pay their bills. Everybody's benefiting. And you say, well, how does the insurance company benefit? Well, without question, they've got their hands in the pockets of those that are producing the aspartame. It's just one big circle. Dog eat dog. It's a food chain, and you're on the food chain. You're uh, one of the ones at the bottom of the food chain. Listen to this. By the FDA's own admission, fewer than 1% of those who experience complications with something they consume ever even report it to the FDA. This balloons the almost 10,000 complaints they once had to around a million. The FDA was reluctantly compelled to provide a list of 92 symptoms. Did you get that? 92 symptoms associated with aspartame. Use as the result of a Freedom of Information Act request. These symptoms ranged from mild to severe, including both seizures and death. They have a plan. And you, it's not in your best interest. Alongside MSG, aspartame is causing serious chronic neurological disorders and a myriad of other acute symptoms. Dr. Russell L. Baylock, a professor of neurosurgery at the Medical University of Mississippi, recently published a book making use of almost 500 references to Uh, thoroughly detail the damage that is caused by the ingestion of excessive aspartic acid from aspartame. Just to let you know, aspartame eventually becomes formaldehyde. And I didn't know if you know this, but a formaldehyde is used in the embalming of people after they die. Are you listening? Yeah, they're embalming you before you're even dead. MSG and aspartame react in much the same way acting as neurotransmitters in the brain by facilitating 
the transmission of information from neuron to neuron. Excessive influx of calcium to the cells then occurs killing neurons. It's killing your neurons. No wonder people have a hard time remembering after drinking this stuff. What kinds of symptoms may occur as a result of ingesting aspartame? They may involve almost any symptom of the body. The FDA and manufacturers of aspartame claim that all of the adverse symptoms reported are an anecdotal. I don't know how to say that word. A n e c d o t a l. I don't know how to say that word. Anyway, I spelled it for you. Because it is common that a person will not experience noticeable illness from a short-term usage of aspartame, this is taken as proof that there is no problem with safety. Unfortunately, this position ignores the fact that the effects of aspartame poisoning are cumulative. What does that mean? It means it grows. It's one thing about aspartame. It never leaves your bloodstream. Ever. It just keeps growing. Excessive glumitic and aspartic Acids generally destroy neurons. Approximately 75% of neural cells in a particular area of the brain are killed before any clinical symptoms of chronic illness are even noticed. I hope somebody benefits from this information. And I noticed... This information that was put on the um, on the internet on YouTube, only three, only a hundred and thirty eight views of this video. Now, what's strange about this is it's been on the internet since April sixteenth, two thousand twelve. Now, without question, this is probably just somebody that took a video that was already on the internet and just re- put it back on the internet, just duplicated it. But I've noticed that any time you have information on the internet like this, for some reason it gets suppressed. And people don't get to see it as, as they would other videos. There's something about those that are part of this eugenics agenda, part of the New World Order and this depopulation agenda, that they are doing everything they can to um, just kind of squelch out and get rid of any kind of information that will expose what they're up to. So th- I think what they do is they kind of bring it, put it down. You know, they just keep pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down to the point where if you do a search in the YouTube, you wouldn't find it. Do a search on the Internet, you wouldn't find it. <clears throat> Damage from long-term exposure... Listen to this. Amino acid can include. Now this is sad. This is what aspartame causes. Multiple sclerosis, memory loss, hormonal problems, hearing loss, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease, or Alzheimer's, whatever they call it, hypoglycemia, AIDS, dementia, brain lesions, Parkinson's disease. That's just to name a few. Luckily, we are able to make conscious decisions as to not purchase these products with aspartame, as they are clearly labeled on the reverse side of all packaging. You know, that's the mercy of God. That is God's mercy that he makes them put this on the package. Right now, they're working on trying to change the names 
so they don't have to put aspartame on the label. But God is so merciful. You don't have to blindly receive poison. God is so merciful that, yeah, you can partake of it knowingly it's bad for you, but God is so merciful that he makes these wicked, evil killers, these murderers, makes them put it on their label. But that's not going to always be the case. I think it's going to get to the point where God's going to allow them to do whatever they want to do because of the wickedness of the heart. Aspartame consists of approximately 40%. 50% of aspartic acid and 10% of methanol. Now, some of these words I have a hard time pronouncing. So I'm going to try and read this again to you. Aspartame consists of approximately 40% of phenylalanine, 50% of aspartic acid, and 10% methanol. I'm not so concerned about getting these names right as I am to expose to you how dangerous this stuff is. I'm not trying to win some kind of a popularity contest of uh, some English teacher or grammar teacher. I My main focus is that you understand how dangerous this stuff is. Aspartic acid, or aspartic, I don't know how they say it. Aspartic is what I think it's saying. Is an amino acid that is necessary for creating protein. In its natural form, it is not harmful to humans. With that said, aspartame contains high concentrations of aspartic acid, and too much of anything is harmful. It has a similar effect to MSG, where it excites brain cells to death. Next time you say you're excited, you might want to find out why you're so excited. I'm so excited, I could die. Excited to death. Methanol breaks down into formic acid and formaldehyde. Once inside your body, or once heated to 30 degrees Celsius, such heating can also occur if the product is stored incorrectly or used, for example, as a sweetener in coffee. Methanol is gradually released in the small intestine. Does this sound like good stuff to you? The absorption of this methanol into the body is sped up considerably when it is ingested. You got to realize your body, the temperature of your body, right? And it says that this f- methanol breaks down into f- from formic acid and formaldehyde. How does it do that? Once inside your body, it gets heated to 30 degrees Celsius. Your body is what's causing that aspartame to have a reaction that causes it to turn into fal- formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a tasteless it's a it's a it's a gas that you can't smell you can't taste but it's deadly it'll kill you now this is a very small ingestion and the more you partake of these products the more you're going to be in danger In 1993 the FDA approved aspartame as an ingredient in numerous food items that would always be heated to above the 30 degree mark. Worse still, three years later, on the 27th of June, 1996, without public notice, the FDA removed all restrictions from aspartame, allowing it to be used in everything, including all heated and baked goods. Now, I think it's interesting that the date is 1996. 
flip over a few of those nines and you get 666. Six, six. They love that number. <clears throat> let, let me just read that again because I think that's important. In 1993, the FDA approved aspartame as an ingredient in numerous food items that would always be heated to above 30 degree mark. That, that means every time you partake of aspartame in these food items or drinks or whatever it is, that you are all, already, that aspartame is turning to formaldehyde in your body. It's killing you at a slow death. You're being embalmed alive. Okay? Now, worse than that, three years later, on the 27th of June, 1996, without, without public notice, the FDA removed all restrictions from aspartame, allowing it to be used in everything including all heated uh, and baked goods. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the elite of this world and, and the rich and the, the uh, Hollywood stars and the millionaires and the billionaires, do you think they eat this stuff? Do you think they partake of this? I guarantee you they don't. I guarantee they don't touch it. An argument used by proponents of aspartame is that tomatoes, grapes, oranges, and other fruits, juices, have the same amount or more methanol within them. While this is true, the methanol used in fruit is bonded with pectin, which regulates the naturally occurring methanol. In other words, God implemented this pectin into this fruit and into these things so that you wouldn't, it wouldn't kill you. Man comes along and wants to produce something that will kill you. Now, remember, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said he's the father of lies, and he is a murderer from the beginning. And he said to his, uh, the, the Pharisees and those that were round about, Jesus said, You are your father the devil. What he does, you will do. So, is it any uh, crazy uh, thinking that... There's people in this world today that are murderers? Come on now. It's up to you to not eat this stuff, to partake of it. God is making them put it on the label. You don't have, I don't, I don't eat anything with aspartame. But I'll tell you another thing that's almost as dangerous as aspartame, and that's regular, excuse me, regular white sugar. The Lord told me one day, he said, the human body was never designed to consume or to, how'd you say it? Was not consumed, was never designed to be able to process white sugar. Now, I'm still eating white sugar. I shouldn't be because the Lord warned me. But white sugar is very dangerous. And it's not the sugar itself that's dangerous, it's when it becomes uh, chlorinated. It's when they, they use the bleach, it's the bleaching process of that uh, brown sugar, the cane sugar, the natural sugar. That when you're using that white sugar, it's that, that sugar that's dangerous. And it's not going to kill you real quick. It's over a long period of time, say 20, 30 years, 40 years. But what's the process? They know that if they can kill you off, they can keep on keeping the population, you know, that they, they keep the population regulated. But now they're not interested in just keeping the population regulated to uh, what the numbers have been up till now. Now they're concerned about depopulating the world even more. And their plan is 500 million people to keep the earth at 500 million people and no more. That's their plan. Um, let me see here. Which regulates the naturally occurring methanol in, and in every case, ethanol is also present, usually in much higher amounts than methanol. Ethanol is an antidote for methanol toxicity in humans. I'm here, just waiting for the next slide so I can read this information to you. Formaldehyde is made when methanol 
is broken down. It is a known carcinogen that has been linked to birth defects, various cancers, specifically brain cancer and leukemia, and also interferes with DNA replication. These cancers come from high exposure or long-term exposure. Regular consumption of artificially sweetened drinks is an example of long-term exposure. You know what I don't understand is all these people like uh, even celebrities on TV that are now trying to expose the conspiracy and the agenda, uh, even 9-11 and things like this. Why don't? Why doesn't anybody get on... Uh, no, you don't see anybody trying to expose aspartame. Probably because Pepsi or Coca-Cola or some of these big corporations that have them killed and they know it. They're afraid to speak out. <clears throat> my my uh, agenda in giving this message is to get my brothers and sisters to stop partaking of this this poison. I'm going to tell you, just because you uh, are saved, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you don't think that this can have an adverse, uh, how I want to say it, adverse uh, reaction in your body. You don't think that God will allow this to kill you? When God makes these murderers put this on, makes these criminals put this on their labeling, You don't think God's going to allow this to hurt you if you willingly partake of this poison because you're too stubborn to stop drinking the diet drinks and partaking of the diet foods? See, you don't need to partake of these foods. Like my wife, she'll eat this chocolate because it has aspartame or has some other kind of, um, uh, you know, supplement for sugar. But because she craves for that sugar, she thinks, well, it's okay. Listen, listen, God's not interested in you and I having all of our fancies, you know, to enjoy the pleasures of this this life to the extreme that we're willing to partake of poison so that we can so that we can indulge in our taste buds or so we can indulge in, in, in the things that we enjoy eating and partaking of. It's up to us to discipline ourselves. Now, there's been a number of times that I've wanted to try something my wife had in the house that had aspartame in it. And I was tempted. But then I get to thinking, I say, why in the world would I want to put poison in my body? Why would I kill myself, even if it is over a long period of time? So you have to take a very, um, you know, you have to take a disciplined action in your own life. You're going to have to, you're going to have to. do something yourself. You can't just expect God to just make your body to be healthy and here you are partaking of poison. you got to do your part. It ruins female sexual response and induces male sexual dysfunction. Well, I guarantee you some of these companies that work on the other end must love this stuff. Deep beyond this, aspartame disrupts photo, that's F-O-E-T-A-L, photo, development. By aborting it or inducing defects. And if a live child is born, aspartame may have heinously damaged the DNA of the, ba- of the baby. Cursing future generations. That's Dr. James Bowen, MD. Did you hear that? And if a live child is born with aspartame, aspartame may have heinously damaged the DNA of the, bo- of the baby, cursing future generations. That was a doctor that said that. Now remember, in the wilderness, God gave them their desire, didn't he? Right? So, 
If your desire is to partake of these diet drinks and diet foods and all these things, and you knowingly, after, especially after hearing this message, keep doing it, after you have this information and you keep on doing it, then you're just, you're just asking for trouble. Aspartame also has a serious detrimental effect on sperm production. The quantity and quality of human sp- uh, sperm is plummeting, and with it, humanity's future. Up to 85% of sperm produced by healthy males is DNA damaged. Did you hear that? Up to 85% of sperm produced by healthy males is DNA damaged. What's the devil trying to do? This is just one of many dangerous things that have been approved by the FDA. A large proportion of sperm is sluggish, poorly structured DNA fragmented, and producing excessive cellular waste and free radicals. Damaged sperm can lead to deformities, brain cancer, birth defects, childhood, leukemia, infertility, and testicle cancer. Again, this is just a brief overview of what the what aspartame can cause. Basically, the formaldehyde and methanol found in aspartame destroys sperm. Can you see how the devil's behind this? God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Fill the earth. The devil wants to do just the opposite. He hates life. Finally, it is important to all to also recognize the fallacy of these sugar-free or low-fat products for what it is, just that, a blatant myth. One must wonder why so many people ingest a toxic chemical like aspartame daily. Now, if God would let me, folks, I'd go around the world, at least the United States, with a PowerPoint presentation and give this message, even if my life was at stake for doing it. For all intents and purposes, this notion sounds ridiculous. The only explanation I can fathom is it is solely due to the erroneous belief that aspartame will keep you from gaining weight. Did you know that's just the opposite? they have found that actually it's just the opposite. That when you eat this aspartame, it makes you more hungry. So what do you do? You ingest more aspartame. Just like sin. Or that it is better for your health. The healthier option with the same great taste. My, my, my. The more I read this, the more I'm glad I didn't ever partake of this stuff. Nothing could be further from the truth. Have we lost touch with our natural senses and instincts? In short, yes. You think God is kidding when he says the church is asleep? You think God is kidding when God says the church is blind, leading the blind? When aspartame is ingested, it is absorbed in in, in the intestines and passes immediately into the liver. The liver breaks down and metabolizes aspartame to its toxic components. While the liver is busy exerting its energy on this process, it has less energy for fat burning and metabolism. This results in the storage of fat. What is it that's causing the obese generation we have before us? If 
Miss Obama was really concerned with obesity, she'd get rid of, she she would outlaw aspartame. She's not concerned. I'll tell you what this what's going on with Obama getting involved with your children's health care. It all and, and I'll even tell you what this health care program with Obama. I, I'll tell you what all this is about. This whole thing is about bringing in the new world order and saying you as parents are not fit to take care of your children. They want that's the state wants property of your children. When this excess fat builds up inside the liver cells, causing fatty liver, it becomes extremely difficult to shed any weight. Whenever the liver is overloaded, you increase your tendency to gain weight easily. So it's just the opposite. It's making you fat. It's, you're not losing weight from partaking of aspartame. The father of lies is at it again, isn't he? There are other mechanisms present in aspartame to which cause unstable blood sugar levels, increases the appetite, and cause cravings for sweets and sugar. Isn't that interesting? Phenylene blocks the production of serotonin, or serotonin, which is a nerve chemical that, among other actives, controls food cravings. You know, I didn't know it was so bad. I had no idea. Well, now you do. Now you do. It is therefore particularly toxic for those with diabetes and epilepsy. It also causes fluid retention, giving the body a puffy and bloated appearance. This alone makes people look fatter than they are, as well as increases cellulite. This is proven information. This is documented facts from doctors, folks. So you you may want to take heed and you say, well, what do I do? How, what do I do to supplement for these foods that are causing me to be overweight or these foods that... I can't eat because I might have diabetic problems. You just have to learn to discipline yourself and balance your diet with regular foods. That's all you have to do. And I understand that takes discipline. I understand that takes work on your part. But is it really the answer to eat poison because you're too lazy and too unconcerned to care? to do something about it? Well, I hope this was enlightening information to you tonight. I know I'm not the most orative and a person that really can speak like probably others can, but I did my best to try to get across to you something that I hope you'll take heed, something that it will alarm, something that will awaken, if you you know if you at least give it serious thought not just shrug it off and if you already just because you listen to this message have made up your mind you're not going to eat that stuff partake of anything that has it in it pass this information on to somebody you love pass this information on if you've got a blog put it on your blog if you have a youtube channel put it on your youtube channel if you have a, a loved one that doesn't go on the internet, put it on a CD or a DVD and bring it to their house and put it on their TV screen. I'm going to make this link to this video available to you. Um, uh, Trying to think of how we can do that. I guess we'll just put it on our Facebook page. So you can go to our Facebook page and... Um, There should be a link to our Facebook page and our profile page. So God bless you, and you have a good evening. Until next time.